This is the DJI Mavic 3. It's the long-awaited follow-up to the Mavic 2 Pro, which came out about three years ago and was incredibly successful and a really, really good drone. I used it myself for, for well over two years all over the world and was just super happy with it. Now, I'm here in Iceland and the last time I was here in Iceland last year, I was doing a review of the Air 2S which is a drone that I really love. It's a drone that I think is absolutely fantastic. Now DJI sent me this and asked me if I'd be interested in testing it and reviewing it. And I'm interested, I'm kind of curious to see how it stacks up against the Mavic 2 Pro and the Air 2S, which is the drone that I'm using at the moment. Now where I'm coming from as a drone user is that I'm a full-time landscape photographer and primarily my, most of my images are taken with a regular camera. But I do use drones a lot in my work because they give you incredible points of view that you just simply can't get with anything else other than a drone. And I use them also for shooting video for, for YouTube videos like this and for vlogs and that kind of thing. So they're not my primary tool, that would be my camera, but they are something that I use a lot. Now when you first take this out of the box, it does feel like a really refined, really well designed product. DJI have been refining this with each iteration since the original Mavic Pro. It's been getting better and better, the build quality, the quality of the gimbal. And there's just something about this when I, when I first opened it. The, the quality of the, of the plastic feels really premium. It feels a lot tougher, a lot more resilient. Uh, the gimbal is really well designed. It feels really solid, a little bit sleeker. The legs are a little bit thinner and it just feels like a really nice product. Now, when it comes to the size and the weight, it's more or less the same as the Mavic 2 Pro. It's a few millimeters bigger in each one of its dimensions, length, width, and height, but surprisingly a few grams lighter. So you're not really gonna notice a difference when you put it in your bag, it's gonna fit in the same space, it's not gonna take up more space, and it's gonna feel about the same weight, but obviously it is significantly bigger and significantly heavier than something like the Air 2S. Now the batteries are bigger and heavier than on the Mavic 2 Pro. So if you're starting to add up the batteries and take more and more batteries with with you then you're going to notice a difference but this bigger battery does give you a significantly longer flight time which is something that I'm going to talk about later and the fact that you get that longer flight time means that you probably need to take fewer batteries with you anyway. Now you'll also notice that the arms are longer which allows for the props to be bigger. Now these bigger props help towards extending the, the flight time but they also make the drone quite a bit quieter. And not only is it quieter, but the pitch of it is significantly different. It's much deeper, it's much bassier than the kind of really high pitched noise that you get with a lot of drones. So I did find that the, the noise that it made was a lot less irritating. Now one of the first things that you're gonna notice when you get this out of the box is this huge oversized gimbal. Uh, which has to be so big because it's accommodating that really big micro four third sensor and two cameras. It really does feel big, but it's also beautifully designed and feels really solid. One of the things that I like about it is that when you, when you switch the drone off, when you power it off, the gimbal actually locks so it doesn't feel like it's flopping around in the bag, which kind of helps give it a sense of security. And you'll also notice that it actually projects a little bit further forward, actually slightly out past the nose. Now this, kind of puts the camera a little bit more at risk if you crash the drone, but what it also allows you to do is to lift the camera up a little bit more to tilt it up without getting the rotors in the shot. Now that matters a lot for me because I film a lot around mountains and with the Mavic 2 Pro, it was something that I struggled a lot with. You'd have to get the drone quite far back or quite high if you didn't want to cut off the top of the mountains. With this, because you can lift the gimbal up a little bit more than you could with that drone, it allows you to fit more in the shot. The camera, uh, the camera on the, the main camera is also a wider focal length. It's a 24 millimeter uh, in terms of full frame equivalent focal length, which is quite wide. It's wider than the Mavic 2 Pro, which was about 28 millimeters. So again, that helps with getting taller things like trees or mountains into the shot, although it's not as wide as something like the Air 2S. But there is also available for this a wide angle lens which just fits on the front, which will give you an effective focal length of 15 millimeters, which is really, really wide. Now I haven't used that yet, but I really am quite interested in seeing that. Now I'll talk more about the cameras later in the video when I look at image quality, but overall the feel of this drone, it really does feel fantastic. It really does feel solid and very well made. So when it comes to the image quality, it is, as you expect, really nice. Video looks really, really good. 
It doesn't have the high default sharpening of the Air 2S and the, the video just looks really nice and smooth. Now you can shoot 5.1K up to 50 frames per second, which gives you a bit of leeway for slow motion. And at 4K, you can shoot up to 120 frames per second, which allows you to slow the video down four times. Now, even though this is a 20 megapixel sensor like the Mavic 2 Pro, like the Air 2S, it uses every pixel on the sensor, which is what gives you that 5.1K as opposed to the 4K on the Mavic 2 Pro because that cropped into the sensor or you, it uses a whole of the sensor, but not all of the pixels. Now, this is basically because the uh, the Mavic 3 has 200 megabits per second bit rate, which is a lot faster. It transfers that data a lot faster, whereas the Mavic 2 Pro can only transfer data at 100 megabits per second. And that's where that difference comes from. Now, there are some caveats with the with the 5.1K. If you're using ActiveTrack, you have to shoot in 4K. Now, this is the same as the A2S, and I have to admit that is a little bit disappointing. But what about the micro four third sensor, that bigger sensor that you've got on the main camera? Now, the main advantage you're gonna see from a larger sensor like this is an increase in the light performance and an increase in dynamic range. When I used it on a recent trip to Tuscany, the increased dynamic range really was noticeable when in places where I was shooting directly into the light. The control of the highlights was really impressive. And I was also really impressed by the low light performance. This scene here is shot at ISO 800 and I basically underexposed it and then brightened it, pushed it quite away in post and really happy with how it looks. Now I do all the shooting in D-Log, which is a flat profile, which gives you a lot of room for grading images. On the CD version, you can also capture data in ProRes, which is a professional codec, which doesn't compress the data in the same way and gives you much more data for color grading. But to be honest, this is something that's pretty much just for professional use if you're gonna be shooting a commercial project for a really big screen. For pretty much every other case, uh, the H.265 codec, it's enough. It's absolutely excellent for grading and most people are not gonna notice a difference. Now it does have the telephoto camera, although to be honest, I didn't use it that much. It has a smaller half-inch sensor and there's no D-log, which really matters to me because it's harder to grade the footage and to get it consistent with what I'm shooting with the other main camera. But it is an interesting addition and I can imagine situations where it could be useful, but overall you do notice a step down in quality with the files, so I prefer to stick with the main camera. Now it does have variable aperture, which is really useful because it gives you more control of the amount of light that's hitting the sensor, making it easier to stick with a frame rate of about one over 60, which gives you smoother, less jerky footage. Now you'll still almost certainly need ND filters if you want to stay at those kind of frame rates, but the variable aperture allows you to make adjustments actually in flight without needing to land and change filters. It's not something that matters for photos though, as depth of field really shouldn't be an issue when you're shooting photographs with a drone. Which brings me to the photo quality. Now again, it's the same resolution as the, as the Air 2S and the Mavic 2 Pro. So the advantages from the larger sensor are gonna be again in dynamic range and low light. But it has to be said, the images look absolutely stunning straight out of the camera. There's just a smoothness about them. There's a quality about them. And it really does feel like there's a lot of detail there. Now, 20 megapixels is generally enough to make decent sized prints, but personally, I do think it's a, it's a bit of a pity that there hasn't been an increase in resolution. Now, generally, I don't really care about resolution that much, but with drone images, when you're often quite far away from the subject, it is nice to be able to crop in a little bit, and that extra resolution would give you that ability. Now, I shoot all my images in RAW, which captures all of the data I've seen and allows me to process it later. And the RAW files are really nice. There's a lot of leeway. There's a lot of dynamic range, uh, a lot of capacity to brighten the images or darken them or control the highlights. And with the telephoto lens, it does give you a different perspective and allows you to compress different layers of the landscape together a little bit. And also with the most recent firmware update, you can now shoot RAW images with it. The smaller sensor though and the lower resolution do mean that you notice a difference as a step down in quality between the two cameras. Overall then the video and photo quality is really nice. Now you're not gonna notice a huge amount of difference between something like the Mavic 2 Pro or the Air 2S, but when you start to work with the files, when you work with the when you work with the D-log footage or when you work with the raw files, you do notice that there is a little bit more there to work with. The, the images are a little bit cleaner, the footage is a little bit cleaner, there's less noise, and you do have a lot more leeway when it comes to things like dynamic range and shooting low light. Now, when it comes to its flight performance, I found this to be an incredibly stable drone. It's really easy to fly. It's really responsive. It's not too fidgety. It really feels quite stable and solid in the air. 
and the flight just feels really smooth. Now, I've flown it in Iceland, so I've flown it in some relatively high winds and never really felt any in, in any way that that was affecting the footage. In all the time that I was flying in Iceland, I didn't get a single wind warning once, even when I was flying in relatively strong winds. I never really got the feeling that the, that the drone was in any way struggling to deal with, with the gusts or the wind that we had here. And even hovering it, you can see that it managed to keep relatively stable, even in situations like this where there was quite strong gusts from side winds. Now, in terms of the connection, it's OcuSync 3.0, which is the same as the Air 2S. And in all the time that I've been flying that drone, I've always been really impressed with how solid that connection is. And it's the same with the Mavic 3. Now, I don't really like to push the range limit of drones. It's rare that I'm flying more than a kilometer or a kilometer and a half away. But when you do do that, it's really nice to know that you've got a secure connection. It just gives you a lot more confidence when you're flying, particularly if you're flying out over things like water, over glaciers, or over volcanoes. And with the Mavic 3, the connection, just like with the Air 2S, has always been rock solid. And even in places like the Highlands in Iceland, where in with some of my previous drones, connection has been a little bit more patchy. I've often gone down to a few bars or I've had dropouts or magnetic interference. Didn't suffer that at all at any point. It was always getting a really strong image back from the drone. Always felt that the drone was completely under control. The least number of satellites that I've been able to connect to is something like 16, but it's usually somewhere around about the mid-20s. And as I've said, this really does matter quite a lot. When you're flying the drone, when you've got it a long way out, when it's windy, it's really nice to know that the connection that you've got coming back from the drone is rock solid. One of the big talking points of the Mavic 3 is that flight time, which DJI advertised at 46 minutes. But of course, you're never going to get that kind of flight time that's in perfect conditions with no wind, with perfect levels of humidity. Re in reality, people will talk about getting something like about 35 minutes of flight time. But even then, performance varies. If you're like me, you're always going to be bringing the drone back to you when you're at about 30% of the battery left or more if it's particularly windy. So how much flight time you get is really dependent on that first 60 or 70% of the battery. Now, one of the things that I really like about the Mavic 3 is usually that first part of the battery is just enough for one flight. You'll get the drone up, fly it over to where you want to do, do some passes in different directions, some rotations, stuff like that, some orbits, do some photos. And then by the time you've got the drone back, you've maybe got like half battery left 40% of the battery left which isn't really enough for you to be taking off again so I'm always putting in a new battery and I tend to go back home with all of my batteries pretty much half or a little bit less half than half full but with the Mavic 3 because of that much more extended battery life what I found is that I can get usually two flights out of one battery so I can get it flight up get it about a kilometer away do some passes bring the drone back and you're still at about 70%, which is comfortable for when you want to take off again a little bit later and do another flight. And that really makes a big difference. So you're getting usually about 25 minutes of actual usable flight time out of it, which is something like the Air 2S or the Mavic 2 Pro. That was much more like about 15 minutes, maybe a little bit more before you're at that 30% mark and you're bringing the drone back home. Now, I tend not to use a lot of the automated functions on the drone, things like master shots and stuff like that, because I like to be in control of how the drone is flying. But I do use active track a lot, particularly for tracking shots, for following shots, for orbiting shots, things like that. And it's something that I do really like using. And I found it very easy and very intuitive to use on the Mavic 3. It's got the same kind of integration as the Air 2S. It's very intuitive and very easy to access when you're flying the drone. I did find that if you're too far away, that if the object that you're trying to track, the, the vehicle or particularly with a person, then it does find it quite hard to lock on and track. You have to get relatively close. Once you've done that, you can tend to back off a little bit and get the item, get the, get the object that you're tracking a little bit further away. But once you do, it really does work very well and you can get some excellent shots of circling around moving objects or following yourself while you're walking. And it's a feature that I do really like a lot and find much more intuitive and easy to use than it is in something like the Mavic 2 Pro. Now the obstacle avoidance on this drone is absolutely excellent. You've got sensors at the front, you've got sensors at the back, you've got sensors on the side for lateral movement, sensors on top when you're moving up and down, and sensors on the bottom. So pretty much 360 degrees all the way around obstacle avoidance. Now I don't really use the drone for following my th myself through trees and stuff like that, so I can't really speak to how well it works for that kind of thing. But what I do like to have is the security of knowing that when I'm flying it, when I'm flying it a little bit far away and you get and it's very difficult to judge distances and, and depth and things like that when you're near cliffs or rocks 
The obstacle avoidance does work really well. So if you're flying backwards and you're gonna hit a rock, it will let you know you get a warning on the screen and then it will stop the drone. And I did find it incredibly accurate, very, very dependable. I was using it a lot in snow and, and drones do tend to have problems when working in, 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 in lots of snow because obstacle avoidance works with things like contrast and stuff like that. But even though there was a warning on the screen telling me that the obstacle avoidance sensors wouldn't, wouldn't normally function as well, I did find that they were very accurate. And one thing that I do really like about this is the sensors on the side because I do tend to do a lot of sideways movements. I do a lot of panning shots. I do a lot of orbital shots. And one thing that the Air 2S lacks is these sensors. So as you're moving around an object, you really don't know sometimes if you're flying a little bit sideways, if you're going to crash into a cliff or a rock or a tree or something like that because it's out of your vision in the camera. The camera is facing forwards as the drone is flying sideways. But with this, it really does work. And on a number of times, it just let me know when I was getting too close to the ground or when I was getting too close to an object. Overall then, the Mavic 3 is an excellent drone. With its overall video and photo quality, with its build quality, its flight capabilities and its battery life, it's probably the best consumer drone on the market right now. And if you want the absolute best, then this is probably the drone that you should be looking at. However, that doesn't mean that it's the best drone for you. It has very similar photo and video output to something like the Air 2S. And for most people, the photo and the video they get from that are gonna be good enough because the differences really aren't that big. But if you value things like the better low light performance of the larger sensor, as well as a slightly better dynamic range, Things like the adjustable aperture, the sideways facing sensors, the overall build quality, or the really good battery life, then this is absolutely a drone that you should be looking at. Now, I think that's it for this video. I think that's pretty much covered everything, certainly in my use of using the drone, but if I've missed anything, or if you've got any questions, drop me an email or drop me a comment below and I'll get back to you. If you're interested in my photography, if you're interested in the way that I shoot, I'll be back in Iceland next year for workshops in the winter and the summer, as well as Lofoten, Namibia, possibly Greenland, the Dolomites. So have a look at my website. All of my workshops are there and drop me a line, drop me an email if there's anything that you're interested in. As always, thanks so much for watching. Good luck with your photography and with all your shooting and take care. See ya.